and good day, everyone. I'm your host for today's event, Mike Lasecki. We're getting ready and we are ready for the start of today's webinar, Orientation to the Advanced Technological Education Conference for Student Attendees. This webinar is being recorded, so if something it gets missed, you can always pick it up on the recording and you'll automatically be sent a link to the recording. Let me turn your attention to the interface we're using. It's called Adobe Connect. On the upper right is the chat window. You can see a message from me that says, hi everyone, plan on sending your questions here. So just type them in and make sure you hit the little speech balloon at the end so that they're submitted. Any question we're open to today, we have several question breaks. In the middle of the screen, you'll see two handouts. These are, they are files you can download to your computer or your file system, wherever, but they're relevant to today's webinar and to our upcoming trip to Washington, DC. On the, far, on the bottom of the screen, you will see the participants list and you can um, see people you might know. You feel free to click on your name. You could actually send them a, uh, a, uh, a private message if you like. So thank you very much again for joining today. So let's go ahead and get started in today's conference by turning to the first slide. Let me introduce to you now today our lead presenter, Ellen House, Program Director, Academic and Student Affairs at the American Association of Community Colleges. Welcome, say hello to everyone, Ellen, and tell us about your colleague, Kate. Thank you, Mike, and hello, everyone, and welcome. Uh, and I'd also like to introduce my colleague, Kate Lockard. Um, I hope you've seen emails from her. Uh, she's a conference coordinator, and she's working uh, with me on the You AT have been conference. muted. Your microphone has been turned on. I'm sorry, Mike, can you all hear yes, me? Yes, I'm sorry, the system just kicked in there for a moment, sorry. Oh, okay, no, no worries, just want to make sure I wasn't talking to no, myself. Um, so um, I'd just like Kate to say a few words. She'll be your um, main point of contact prior to the event and on site. So uh, put, a, put a name with a voice and a photo. <laughs> Kate, are you on? I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes, we can, Kate. So you got to say a little bit more than I'm here. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm here. Hi, everyone. Um, I know I've been bombarding a bunch of you guys with emails. Uh, so thank you all for filling out your student forms and for joining the webinar tonight. Um, I look forward to you guys being in my hometown uh, for the conference in a, you know, in a month or so. Uh, if you have any questions now or when you get on site, um, I'm the person to go to, and I look forward to helping you out and having you guys have the best conference and experience in DC possible. Great, thank you, Kate. Um, so let me, um, let me add to, to Kate's welcome on behalf of the American Association of Community Colleges and the National Science Foundation. We are really excited to welcome you to Washington, DC and to the ATE conference. Um, it's our hope that this webinar will help give you a little guidance about the event, help you maximize your time while you attend it, uh, orient you to what's going on, and, and give you an opportunity to ask questions. So I want to begin by going over what we're going to cover uh, today. Uh, we've broken down the webinar into a few sections, so we'll be giving you a general conference overview, uh, talking about registration, hotel, and travel, going over the student events, and some other common uh, conference questions. So before we started, I actually wanted to get a sense uh, from you all how many have how many of you have been to DC. Uh, so if we could launch the poll, if you've been, uh, if this is your first time to DC, or uh, if you if you are returning to the city. So we'll take just a moment to see. Well, it looks like I've got. It's still coming in. So I have a good number of people that have been to. This is their second time to Washington DC. But I think those that this is their first time is edging out that number. So we've got a good split. Um, so we look forward to welcoming those that this is their first time to DC and welcoming back um, those that get the opportunity to come again. It's a wonderful city. So we hope you have the opportunity to see some of it uh, while you're here for the event. So if we can close the poll and I'll move us forward. So in this section, we're going to go over the what, where, when, who, and why of the event. 
And so let's start with the, the what is it. So I think you, you keep hearing ATE. ATE stands for the Advanced Technological Education Program. And all of your programs of, of study are funded by ATE grants to your college from the National Science Foundation. So the conference is actually the National Advanced Technological Education Principal Investigators Conference, uh, so which is why we call it the ATEPI Conference, or ATE Conference for short. If you're not familiar with, a, with what a PI is, a PI stands for a Principal Investigator, and that's a term used to describe the project director or the project leader for the ATE grant. And this conference is a national professional development and networking event and uh, for PIs leading ATE grants and for their project partners. And it's co-sponsored by the National Science Foundation and the American Association of Community Colleges. And it's primarily funded through a grant to AACC. And for those of you who may not be familiar with AACC, we're the primary advocacy organization for the nation's community colleges. And we pr promote community colleges through strategic action areas such as recognition and advocacy, student access, learning, and success, community college leadership, economic and workforce development, and global and intercultural education. And we've been working with NSF to host the annual ATE conference for the past 23 years. So this is our 24th event. And next year, we look forward to celebrating the 25th anniversary of the ATE program and the ATE conference. So where is it? The conference is held in the Washington, D.C. metro area and typically takes place each year in October. I hope you are well familiar with the dates for this year's event, which are on the screen. And also take note of the photo on the screen. This is a, an actual picture of the Omni Shoreham Hotel where the conference will be held. It is actually a, a really beautiful historic property near downtown D.C conveniently located on the red line of our, our metro line system and is within easy walking distance to a number of area restaurants and shops. One of those um, handouts is a, a student guide on getting around the Washington DC area which includes a restaurant list and some tips uh, for the DC area so you'll want to make note of that as well. So who attends? The event is attended by approximately 800 people each year. Participants include those that are leading grants for ATE projects and centers and their grant partners from business, industry, K-12, and four-year institutions. And the conference also provides the opportunity for approximately 60 students to attend, of which you are among that cohort. So congratulations again for being selected to attend this national event. Again, we look forward to welcoming you. Um, in addition, NSF program directors and AACC staff attend, as well as selected guests representing fed the federal government and STEM-related nonprofits and associations. So why attend? Uh, you can see on the, on the screen, um, we have had students who've said the, the conference has uh, you know, given them a sense of pride, it's boosted their confidence. Um, it, it's also an opportunity for you to meet other students, learn about new technologies, learn about new STEM career fields, and provide you the opportunity to learn from ATE leaders and industry representatives firsthand. And I'll talk a little later about one of those sessions where you can engage directly with industry. Um, and the conference, we also hope to give you a chance to see some of Washington, D.C. and tour the city while you're here. Okay, so now on to some of the logistical items. Um, just conference costs, we'll review um, who will cover and, and, and pay for, for what in, in pertaining to your participation. So for students, AACC covers your registration fee, and we also cover two nights of your lodging. And all other expenses are, are covered by your respective institution or by your sponsoring ATE grant. So if you've not done so already, you should discuss airfare, ground transportation, and meal expenses with your, your PI or, or, or the faculty that nominated you. The majority of students travel with the, the grant team. Uh, therefore, airfare and ground transportation to and from the airport are covered. But if you're not traveling with your PI or another grant team member, you should speak with them on how your ground transportation um, will be handled. AACC will provide the following meals during the conference. We do a pretty heavy reception on Monday evening. We offer breakfast and lunch on Tuesday and Wednesday. So you'll want to think about budgeting for, for dinners um, or any meals incurred during your travel days. And you can't forget souvenirs. If you get a chance to, to get out, you might want to budget for those. So what to expect in, in regard to hotel registration and student activities? 
So hotel reservations, hopefully all of you have completed your student information request form. That's an online form, is actually due today, um, which would help us make your hotel accommodations and get you set up for your showcases. Um, we ask that, you, that we make your hotel reservations, but if you have already made your hotel reservations or your faculty member or PI has done so, do not cancel the reservation. Just be sure to include the confirmation number on the student information request form or send it to Kate and we'll make sure that we assign that room to our master account so AACC is paying for that room. So again, if you, if you haven't made a reservation, we'll take care of it. If you have, just let us know and we'll make sure that um, the, the billing is, uh, goes to AACC. So as I've uh, stated, AACC will cover two nights lodging. If you plan to come in before or stay after, uh, you're just responsible, your college is responsible for any additional nights. The rate for additional um, room nights is $2.59 per night, and the Omni extends the group rate based on availability for up to three days before and three days after the conference dates. So when checking in, do be aware that you'll have to provide a, a credit card to cover any incidentals that may you may um, acquire while you're in the hotel, if you use room service or anything like that. Um, so that, you know, just be aware that you or someone from your grant will need to cover any incidentals that may be incurred during your stay. And also, if you put down a debit card, the Omni will automatically deduct $50 at check-in, and it'll take up to 10 business days after checkout to be reimbursed for that difference. So we do want to make people aware of that. If you're putting down a debit card instead of a credit card, they'll put a hold on that. Um, also, be sure to confirm with the front desk at check-in that your room is to be charged to the ACC master account. And if you have any problems, come to the ATE conference registration desk, and we'll get you squared away once you're on, you know, while you're on site before you check out. So when you're ready to register for the conference, you'd come to the west wing of the hotel to pick up your registration materials. Uh, you'll sign in at the registration desk. Uh, by signing in, you give ACC permission to use your photo with any ACC publications or media that promotes and shares information on the ATE program. If you want to opt out of that, you can do so at the registration desk when you sign in. Um, you'll also be, be given another copy of the materials that you can download here on, on the website, uh, the student events, and uh, the guide to the D.C. area. So you'll have all of that information at uh, your disposal, and we'll email that to you as well. Um, before going into the student events, I was just going to break here quickly and um, see if there were any questions. Ellen, there is a couple of questions, but I think you might have answered it already. One of our colleagues, and it's probably true of many of us, are on somewhat limited funds. I mean, should they plan on bringing, I mean, there's going to be extra incidentals and things like that. So what, what would we recommend that they bring? Um, well, I, I would bring funds to cover you know, primarily dinner. You can make the Monday evening into a dinner. We make it substantial yeah. enough. Um, Tuesday, you'll definitely want for dinner, or um, we do have you know, breaks during the day, so coffee and those types of things are covered. But across the street from the Omni, there are a number of very economical um, restaurants as well. So it's really looking at um, you know, budgeting for dinner on that Tuesday night. And on Wednesday, if your you know your travel has you leaving later or even the following day, okay. And then when you do go out on the tour on Tuesday afternoon, you have the opportunity to go to the Air and Space Museum. There may be an opportunity. If there are any incidentals or things you want to pick up there, but the conference pre covers uh, the majority of the meals. Okay, that sounds pretty good. So other than that and souvenirs and incidentals, you're it's probably not so bad. Not so bad, no. <laughs> we hope okay, not. Good, good. There's several questions, but I think they're coming up in your logistics. I mean, I got a question about airport transportation and what to wear, but I know you're going to cover some of those things. So why don't we go ahead into your next section, and then I'll come back in with some more questions. Okay, sounds great. Thank you. Okay, so moving forward, I'd like to talk about student activities um, at the conference. For those of you that are coming in early, on Monday at 1.30, we have an informal student meet and greet in the executive room, and this is on a student schedule of events that you can download from um, this webinar, and we'll also send to you over email. And that's an opportunity, we'll have some light refreshments, an opportunity to meet with other students, uh, hear from some ATE PIs and AAC staff, 
about the conference and then an opportunity to tour the Omni Hotel because it actually has some historical significance and see its infamous ghost suite. So um, that's a, a fun thing to do if you are at the conference on Monday. It's not a requirement, um, but it is a, an opportunity um, to meet other students prior to the conference starting that evening. We kick off that evening with an opening plenary session uh, where the keynote speaker is Judy Marks, the CEO of Siemens. And then following that is the ATE Center showcase and reception with a lot of good food. So that just gives you a flavor of the, of the first night. Um, and, and now I want to talk about some of the other ses student sessions. So within the conference, students have the opportunity to present. Uh, this is actually a student plenary panel uh, that, that we had last year. So students have been a part of concurrent sessions and breakfast roundtables um, and certainly um, participate in the showcase sessions. So for many, it's their first time presenting in a professional environment. Uh, just another photo of some student presentations. Uh, and then Tuesday morning, bright and early, uh, we have the Student Recognition Breakfast, which is held in your honor. And you'll be presented with certificates that recognize your achievements in STEM by the National Science Foundation. That breakfast starts at 7.30, and it concludes at 8.45. Um, and it really is a great opportunity to see all of you honored and recognized. Immediately following the student uh, breakfast, we have an industry speed networking session. And we actually pull in 10 to 12 industry representatives, and you sit with them in small groups and learn about interview skills um, and how to um, you know, present yourself to industry and what skills industry is looking for in new hires. So uh, you can't get any closer than this to some of the industry representatives at the event. So we really hope you'll take advantage of this session. So um, after this, we move into the showcases, and then another, which I'll talk about momentarily. And then on the afternoon, we give the opportunity for students to go on a tour of DC, uh, which also includes the Air and Space Museum. Uh, do keep in mind, if you signed up to go on this tour, that there's a lot of walking, so you'll want to wear some comfortable shoes. Um, we also want to advise you that if you are traveling with someone, unfortunately, they'll not be able to accompany you on the tour, as we only have space enough space to accommodate our student participants. Um, so again, if you want to sign up to attend the tour, that's a part of your student information request form, which is due today. And now we'll talk about the student showcases, which really gives you an opportunity to share information on your program of study and career field. And these are a couple of photos from previous student showcases. I'll give you a few more there. And then this is a sample of how showcase abstracts that you've submitted or will be submitting through your student information form will look like in the program. And just to go over the showcase sessions, the students are expected to prepare a display related to your, your program of study or your current work and, and present as part of a student showcase session. So you'll be doing this in conjunction with ATE projects. So you will be assigned to present on either Tuesday or Wednesday. So you won't do both. You would be on Tuesday or Wednesday. And your setup times um, are in the parentheses. So if you're on Tuesday, the showcase is from 1130 to 145. And we would have you set up prior to that. On Wednesday, the showcase is from 10 to 1215. And the setup is actually during the, the morning hours from 745 to 845. And that's in the program as well. And this is a map of the exhibit hall, so you get a sense of where all the booth space is and all those tables in the back are where we hold the food. So each student, uh, in terms of booth logistics, can request a poster board and pin for their displays. And if you wish to obtain your poster board and pins on site before the actual showcase, if you wanted to you know, get yours ready to go, you can check with the registration desk. And someone from ACC will provide one for you to mount your display before bringing it down to the exhibit hall. Otherwise, poster boards and pins, if you've requested one, will just be placed right at your booth. So when you walk in, it'll be at the table uh, with your um, assigned space. Please note that ACC will also provide one piece of audio or visual equipment per booth. If you are coming with another student from your institution, you, you will be expected to share a booth. And while you both can have individual poster boards and pins, you'll only be able to request one piece of equipment per booth. So you're going to want to collaborate and think about what would work best for your, your joint displays. Uh, the options are listed on the screen, a TV with a DVD player, a 17-inch monitor, or a projection screen. 
and you must request these on your student information request form, which again is due today. You're going to catch a theme there. Um, and we can't make changes or add equipment on site during the conference. So if you need to make a change and you've already submitted your form, you need to email Kate um, so we can get that taken care of before you're on site. And then this is just um, some pictures of the hall and some of the food events that are occurring during the project showcases. So other conference questions, we'll go over conference attire, internet access, and we're almost done and, and ready for questions from you all. So conference attire is business casual. We do ask you to wear comfortable shoes. This is a, an old hotel, uh, a lot of walking and a, and a you know, a, 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 sometimes can be a little um, interesting to get around directionally. So you want to be comfortable and you want to dress in layers because meeting rooms can be cool. For internet access, AACC has negotiated with the hotel to provide a wireless access code for use by participants in meeting rooms and common areas. Do note this does not apply to the exhibit hall, so there is not internet access in the hall, but in other meeting spaces and common areas of the hotel, you'll be able to access your devices wirelessly, and this code is actually on the back of your name badge when you check in. And in addition, you'll have a separate code for wireless access in your sleeping rooms. Important deadline is today for your student information form. And then Kate, who uh, talked to you at the very beginning, is your go-to for any questions. Um, and, and she'll be your go-to on-site. She'll be at the registration desk as well. And now um, this is a student group photo from last year's event. And we do ask you to take a, a group photo uh, at the end of the student breakfast. And now I'd like to see if we have, um, actually, let me go back so we can look at this great group uh, while we address any final questions. We have a bunch of questions <clears throat> that's come in by email and, and the chat. Ellen, let me start with you. Is there a conference app? There is a conference app. So we will be sending out information on that as soon as it is live. So you can absolutely uh, download the app for the conference. Okay. Now, I know. You'll, you actually, as being registered, will get an automatic email from ATE Central, which is the partner that is helping us put on this webinar. They are the folks that put together the conference app for us. So you'll be getting a direct link as a conference registrant to download that, and then we can follow up with you as well. Make sure you have Excellent. it. Excellent. Question in the chat window, and you can tell they've had some experience before. Is there an HDMI connection uh, for that provided LCD? Um, well, we don't provide an, you, you mean the, the monitor? Yes. yes. So, oh, yes, yes, there I, is. I thought there would be, but I just wanted to double check uh, on that. Now, um, Ellen, Kate is a, is, Kate, are you a native of D.C.? Um, I was raised in Bethesda, Maryland. My grandparents actually got married at the Omni Shoreham Hotel. So, yes, I am a native of the D.C. area. All right, area. we've got some questions for you, and thank you for joining us today. Here's the questions. There's a whole list of them. Uh, can I, I'm a runner in the morning. Can I run around the Omni or is it like the middle of this, you know, concrete jungle? No, actually, um, the Omni is a great location for runners. Um, it's located right on Rock Creek Park and there are paths that run right through the middle of the city. So with the concierge or I can help you with uh, running paths, but it's directly down the hill and there's miles of trails you can run on. Cool. Now, uh, you know, sometimes there are some things, meals, that aren't provided by the conference. We hear that D.C. is an expensive place. Is there a McDonald's nearby if I need to get something quick? Absolutely. There's a McDonald's. There's a Chipotle. There's a Nando's. There's quite a few options located just a block or two away from the hotel um, for the affordable options. There's also some nicer places um, that have decent decently priced food for sit-down meals. But yes, there's um, plenty of places to grab a quick meal while you're at the Omni. Here's a question that I don't understand not being from DC. It says, what is the vibe like on H Street Northeast? It's a cool, it's a good question. I appreciate this one. Um, the vibe is a good vibe. Um, it depends on what you're looking for. There's music venues, there's divey bars, there are, um, some nice dining options. Um, it is not the closest to the Omni, but public transportation is pretty good in DC, um, as well as Ubers, 
and cabs. So <laughs> we're sending our students to divey bars. I'm joking, joking. No, <laughs> there's some good dining options and music oh, venues. Yes, that's, that's what you said. <laughs> now, you, you mentioned the Metro. OK, people, exactly. people have heard a lot about the Metro, but not every of us have experienced it. And, and my impression is it's this tremendous transportation. But a lot of us have questions. Number one, is it safe? Should you travel like on daylight hours, or, or what's the deal? How, tell me about the safety. The metro is very safe. Um, there's also a lot of metro buses and a bus called the Circulator that um, shuttle uh, everyone around the DC area. Um, the Omni is located directly on the Red Line, um, which will take uh, everyone downtown. It is it is very safe. The metro does not run past I believe 11 o'clock at night um, or before 7 a.m. So um, it is perfectly wonderful to use. It is very easy to use, and again, I can help at the registration desk or anybody at the Omni's concierge desk can help direct people to the metro and how to get around. Is it expensive? Uh, it is not expensive. I believe it's roughly between $1.75 and 250 per way. Okay. Uh, give or take, they keep changing the prices on us. Um, but no, it's a very affordable way to, tra to travel. As I recall, the metro stop is approximately a 42-second walk from the Omni. Correct. It is right across Something the street. Something like that, right? Uh, here's another question. Is there a bike, sh mm -hmm. uh, is DC into bike shares? If, if I want to tool around on a bike, can I do one of those things where you, you know, you, you take a bike out of a rack and you return it somewhere? Yeah, absolutely. There's bike shares that are located right in the Woodley Park neighborhood, which is where the Omni is located. Um, I'm not exactly sure on the price. It's either 7 or $10 a day um, that you can rent the bikes for. Um, and there's plenty of stops all around the city. Um, and there's an app you can download. It's the same, I believe, as other cities um, that you can see where the bikes are located and how to then return them. You really do know about these things. Uh, is there an app for the DC Metro? Oh, I see. <laughs> Ellen's already got in the window. Ellen, you're always ahead of me. Um, <laughs> there it is. I, I know you can't see um, Kate, but she's already <laughs> typed it into the, uh, into the window. Cool. Um, OK, another question that came in, and it's about tours. And I'm going to phrase this in several ways. Uh, tell me your top five tourist type of things to do in D.C. in terms of like touring, you know, mall and stuff like that. Top five. Um, the top five are any of the Smithsonian's. Um, all of the museums in D.C. are free, mm. so that's a big perk. Um, I would say if you are coming in early or staying late or know you have time to go and look at the African American Museum, uh, website. Um, that's the newest museum in DC's repertoire, and you can get tickets to that. Um, I believe that's the only way you can go to that museum at the moment, but it's, it apparently is amazing um, and would recommend it. But all the other Smithsonian's, whether it's the Air and Space that we will be seeing together, or the Portrait Gallery, or the American History, or Natural History Museums are all located right off the metro, right downtown on the mall. Um, so all of those are my favorite. The Georgetown waterfront is beautiful to take a walk and actually see some water. Um, Georgetown itself is just historic. It's got cobblestone streets. Um, we're located right outside of the DuPont Circle area, which is a beautiful neighborhood. Um, and the list goes on. Um, you all have my email. Again, I know a lot about the area. I'm happy to share and also help when you're actually in DC. I'm getting excited. And, go ahead, Ellen. Just to, just yeah. to add to that, when they go on their tour, <laughs> Of the Air and Space Museum, they do the they do take them around some of the major monuments, uh, let them do a little bit of a walking tour. So you ha since you are on the National Mall, um, the bus will stop at a few choice places so you can see some of the monuments, uh, see Capitol Hill, as well. I seem to recall, Kate, it's like I'm guessing now, 15 or 18 minutes total by metro down to the mall. Exactly, it's very quick and easy. Okay. That was one of the questions that came in. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. Is this coming up? Yep. It's yeah, also it. If you. No, I was just going to say you're also only two metro stops away from the White House, um, in that part of the city. So that's another um, wonderful area to walk around, and see. I'll comment here, Kate, and see what you think. I had the opportunity to go on and walk around the, uh, you know, of course, quite a distance from the White House at night, and it was really interesting to to do that. Just to go down there by metro and walk around the White House at 10:30 at night, it was pretty neat. 
Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Uh, from the, in the area. We're now, the conference starts in almost exactly a month from today, rough, right, um, Ellen? Um, what's the weather going to be like? How cold is it going to be? You know, it's it's one of those things in October, it could be absolutely beautiful and in the low 70s, um, or you, you might get a little bit of a cold snap and it might be in the 50s. Um, but but typically, we, we're right in that kind of 60 degree mark, so it's, it's a nice fall um, weather um, time period, and it's a beautiful time to actually be in the city. Uh, Kate, one more question for you. Can you arrange a tour of the West Wing for us? <laughs> Um, I sadly cannot arrange Darn a West Wing Darn tour. It. I have plenty of West, West Wing episodes we can watch, now but I cannot get you inside the West Wing. <laughs> I couldn't resist, uh, couldn't resist doing that. But, you know, there are some, so many things that are beyond the monuments. I mean, like the Supreme Court, that's an amazing place to see and things like mm-hmm. that. So, um, and don't forget, mm-hmm. you're, you're right down the street uh, from the National Zoo, if you, if you wanted to do that, uh, right where we are at the Omni Shore Does Hotel. Does it cost, Ellen, to get in? No, it is, it is free, just as are all the Smithsonian's. Oh. This is really good. I'm, I'm so excited uh, to come. I, I've been there before, but this is another opportunity for me to come, so I'm very excited. Just listening to you both makes me uh, want to do this. We've covered the uh, questions that have come in from the window. But um, here's here's one, Kate. This is like playing stump the Kate. Um, what's the name of the building that holds the Declaration of Independence? Oh, Ellen already answered. Darn, you're so fast, Ellen. The National Archives. See, Kate, she knew that. She knew that one. Okay. Yeah, she she's got me. I can't see the question. <laughs> is it, is it yeah. available to see, uh, Ellen? Can you you know it's under glass, of course, but can you go up to it? It is under glass, you know, and it, it depends um, if it's on display or not. We could You could check the website. Okay. Well, good. So, friends, I think the message for today is, is that this is an extremely well-organized event. When you get to the hotel, you get to that conference registration desk. You'll see Ellen. You'll see Kate, the other staffers. They really make it easy, and just check with them. The, the hotel's a lovely place to be. It's a real opportunity, I think, to be part of this whole thing. You're part of a community now, the advanced technical education community. And I think that'll carry you forward into your careers from now forward. So let's let's make sure that we do this. Ellen, did we cover everything? Did are we at the end? Is there a contact here? I think we have covered everything. Um, I will just advance so oh, I think we already gave you Kate's oh, contact information. It's here again. Kate Lockhart. Um, and I'm sure you've been harassed by email from her <laughs> already. <laughs> um, Everybody but, uh, has. Forward to again seeing you and welcoming you in October. Uh, please feel free to ask us any questions. Uh, seriously, we're we're here to help. We want this to be an enjoyable and enriching experience for you. So don't hesitate to reach out. Um, and with that, Mike, I think we, we did have a, a, a brief survey we'd like to hold just so we can improve these webinars and, and uh, understand if they were if it was helpful to you. So if you wouldn't mind um, taking a look at that. Um, and then as a reminder, this webinar is recorded um, and the slides are available. We'll, you'll get a link to those and we'll also post them to the website if you have uh, fellow students who were not able to attend the live event that they have the opportunity to, to watch this and uh, look at the slides as Perfect. well. Okay, folks, here's the deal. Kate, you can go ahead and, and sign off. We really appreciate uh, your coming in and talking to us today. And Ellen, thank you personally again for all you do to make the conference great. Colleagues, you now get to help us, right? We've tried to help you. I'm going to launch the survey. It's going to open in a new browser window so you can see that. There's just a few questions on the survey. Take your time. Answer those questions. I'll leave the system open for a few more minutes, but basically this officially concludes our webinar. Once again, please fill out that application. And Ellen, do I remember that the applications were due today? <laughs> yes, Mike, they are due today. They are open till midnight. <laughs> <I'm> sorry. <laughs> Your time. <laughs> okay, okay. We're all going to get them in today, so that'll be great. Ellen and Kate, thank you. Yes, yeah. and, and if you don't get it in today, you'll be hearing yeah. from Kate. <laughs> okay, now we're talking. Friends, you can see this is going to be a lot of fun, this event uh, coming up. Uh, thank you for taking your own time and joining us today to help prepare for coming to D.C. just about a month from now. Goodbye, Ellen and Kate. I'm going to go ahead and, and stop the recording, close down the audio system, but leave that, I'm going to leave that survey up for a few more minutes. So thank you again.
Thank you, Bye, Mike. Everyone. Thank you all. Bye.